This is a production of PBS Charlotte. This weekend off the record, wow, what a week in Raleigh, right? A new election is ordered for North Carolina's 9th Congressional District after testimony about possible voter fraud that was literally enough to make a candidate cry. Also more from the Charlotte protest murder trial. Who was Raekwon Borum aiming at before his gun went off in the middle of those protests three years ago? How about that NBA All-Star weekend here in Charlotte? And could the NFL draft be Charlotte's next big pro sports get-together? Charlotte's most affordable housing may be getting less affordable, all because of revaluation, and Mecklenburg County Commissioners weigh in on the national immigration debate that's becoming our local immigration debate. Off the records next on PBS Charlotte. Hi, I'm Jeff Sonier. This is Off the Record, where we talk about the stories you've been talking about this week. And if you watch the news, read the news, or listen to the news, you'll recognize the names and faces around our table today. Ashley Fahey from the Charlotte Business Journal and Mark Becker from WSOC-TV. Thanks for being here. Also, Eli Portillo from the Charlotte Observer and Dedrick Russell from WBTV. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us at home as well. You can join our conversation. Just email your questions, comments, and Bundled absentee ballots to off the record at WTVI.org. <laughs> but we won't turn them in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me apologize up front. Um, we just laid out a bunch of topics that we'd like to talk about tonight, but frankly, we may not get to all of them because we've got so much to talk about when it comes to the uh, 9th District race and the hearings and the testimony in Raleigh this week. Eli, you just uh, got back from all that in Raleigh. Kind of bring us up to date on where we are and where we've been the last couple of days. So Mark Harris, the Republican candidate, uh, before this week had steadfastly denied knowing about any wrongdoing, um, knowing about the actions of McRae Dowless, who's the Bladen County operative accused of collecting, bundling, and turning in absentee ballots. Mm -hmm. But yesterday on Thursday, Mark Harris said that the evidence he's heard during this case uh, has convinced him that there was wrongdoing and a new election should be held. Now this came after a really dramatic week of testimony in which Mark Harris's own son, attorney John Harris, contradicted his father's statements that he hadn't been warned and testified under oath that he warned his father multiple times that McRae Dallas, this Bladen County man, was likely committing felony absentee voter fraud. Now this contradicted Mark Harris's earlier denials and insistence that he had never had any warnings. They also, uh, the state brought out emails and messages between John Harris and Mark Harris, in which John Harris literally emailed his father the statute in North Carolina law that makes collecting absentee votes a felony and said, I am fairly certain that's what they're doing. It was a uh, devastating and intense testimony. Yeah, let me ask you about that. You know, a lot of these hearings, uh, surprises at a hearing are unusual. You don't normally get that sort of thing. You know what's coming. It's telegraphed. I mean, everyone in the room kind of has a, a sense of where both sides are going. I, I didn't get a sense that anybody in the room, short of those, those, you know, those people asking the questions, knew that this was coming. I mean, the, you know, the, the turnaround by Mark Harris himself, the testimony by his son, there was a lot of turns and uh, twists and turns and surprises in this hearing that that uh, seemed really unusual for a hearing of this sort. Is, yes, is that a, fair? a lot of times, you know, these hearings can be kind of rote, you yeah, know, kind you of know the drum. evidence, and that's what some people were expecting. We were expecting that they could even, the board could even deadlock, but no one knew um, until very shortly before that John Harris would testify. Mark Harris actually said he found out basically by accident from another one of his sons the night before at 11 p.m. that his son was going to testify. And uh, his admission or uh, declaration Thursday afternoon that we should have a new election came after his lawyer dramatically stopped, asked for a recess, hmm. the board retired for about almost an hour when they came back, Mark Harris took the stand and declared that he was having trouble with recall and um, that he had made incorrect statements during his testimony under oath. He attributed that to two undisclosed strokes hmm. that he said he had in January. Wow. Then he said we should have a new election, stood up, walked out of the building. Well, well go ahead. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I was not there. 
No. But just watching from a distance, as most of us were, is riveted to what was going on. What theater? I mean, yeah. he, his son is testifying, and, and he was crying in, 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 in the back. Um, clearly went beyond what I think any of us expected yeah. to see. We thought it was going to be pretty dry. But mm -hmm. to your point, I think, and Eli and I were talking about this earlier, you don't, this is not a criminal courtroom. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and not even a civil lawsuit. So you don't have the discovery thing, right? You can keep witnesses, but you don't have to say who's going to testify for you. So yes, this was sort of a different set of rules and, again, not a criminal proceeding. Um, so the, the surprises certainly were there. And, and, and at the same time, John Harris, Mark Harris's son, is an assistant U.S. attorney in the Eastern District of North Carolina. He clearly knows the law and, and, and clearly knows where, where that line is and apparently tried to, quite literally, I guess in old parlance, telegraph it to his father uh, a year earlier. So what a, what a dynamic. Mm -hmm. And I guess the interesting thing is, is how do you go from the Harris camp weeks ago saying, I should be in yeah. Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. Put me in Washington, D.C. Yeah, they were defiant at one point about these, uh, these challenges. And then we fast forward to yesterday mm -hmm. saying that, you know, there were some inconsistencies and things like that. So I, I'm just wondering what you knew yesterday. Did you know when you were yelling and screaming saying, put me in D.C.? Yeah, I think it's difficult well, to overstate how big a reversal this is. Right. February 9th at the uh, NC GOP Executive Committee meeting, um, there was a video of that posted online. Mark Harris stood up and said, this is all um, unsupported slander. He said the Democrat machine has reared its head again. He said this is a, basically a conspiracy between the liberal media right. <laughs> and liberal activists and the Democratic Party coming together to deny me this seat in Washington. I must be seated and uh, my race should be certified. And that was the position that the GOP leadership also took, um, mm -hmm. Dallas Woodhouse, Robin Hayes. So they, at the beginning of this week, were basically still saying, this is all a conspiracy, the truth will come out, Mark Harris will be in Washington, there's not gonna be a new election. To have him stand up, right. say, we need a new election, and walk off the stand and out of the building was simply a stunning reversal. Yeah. Well, well, Mark Harris is not a career politician, he's a preacher who has decided the last couple of elections to run for office. Is, is that what we're seeing here? I mean, is, is, I mean, I hate to say this, but preachers have consciences and not all politicians do. I mean, is, is, he, is he a good guy who got caught up in a bad set of circumstances? Or, or yeah, you know, how, much, how much of the blame do we lay at Mark Harris's that, feet in this that's, whole thing? That's tricky. This is Mr. Smith tries to go to Washington, right? <laughs> I mean, we, we, we don't know. In a man's heart, in a man's head. I mean, I, I knew Mark Harris when he was the senior pastor at First Baptist Church downtown. He interviewed him many times, and then he started dabbling. Actually, he ran for Senate, I think, years ago. So he's been looking at politics for a long time, and, and I've always thought very highly of Mark Harris as a, as, as, as a person with his, his values and integrity. So this is uh, quite stunning, and the fact that some of this stuff that was supposed to be produced uh, the, the, mm -hmm. the information that was mm -hmm. supposed to be shared with, with the investigators wasn't until 15 minutes before, you know, th th this happened. Again, months. We're not talking about a rush, a rushed mm -hmm. hearing. This thing was put off. And mm -hmm. how can you explain that that stuff wasn't there and that he didn't know what was going on? Mm -hmm. Did he yep. get caught up in it? I don't know, and I'm not sure we'll ever know. Yeah. Well. I, I don't think we can sit here and, and pass moral judgment or so. No, that's not our that's not But our I do think it's important to point out this is not Mark Harris's first run for federal office. This was not Mark Harris's second run for federal office. This was Mark Harris's third campaign for federal office. He's been running, um, he's been a pastor, but he's been dabbling very heavily in statewide politics since 2012 with the a fight over Amendment 1 and gay sure. marriage. And the last three federal elections he's run every time, for Senate in 2014, for the House in 2016, for the House again in 2018. So he's not a political newcomer. He's not um, you know, someone who's just caught up and trying yeah. and doesn't know what's going on. And that, I think, is, um, you know, is important to point out. In 2016, he lost the Republican primary by 134 votes to Robert Pittenger. And he said on the stand yesterday that he was bitter and frustrated after that. And he has said that he sought out McRae Dallas, this Bladen County political operative, because um, he had worked for his rival 
and helped him get a lot of absentee votes, actually more absentee votes than his margin of defeat. And one of the board members asked him yesterday, um, in probably the most direct and painful question from the Board of Elections, um, he looked at Mark Harris and said, you just wanted to win, didn't you? You didn't look into this and see whether these illegal activities mm -hmm. were going on. You just hired this guy because you wanted to win. And uh, that was the question that kind of got mm -hmm. to, the, to the heart of this. And, you know, there's some interesting takeaways. You know, people say you, you live by the sword, you die by the mm -hmm. sword. So here you have the Republican Party who they were, you know, champion for election fraud and we need to take this down. And lo and behold, you know, the election fraud took down the Republican candidate. Um, another thing to take away is that, you know, you could say that the system worked. You know, you have a board who is supposed to look at the evidence, mm -hmm. evidentiary hearing, you know, it worked. And so, you know, you have a bipartisan group, Republicans and Democrats, who unanimously said that there needs to be another election. So that showed that the system worked. And then lastly, I know that Mark Harris is going to be relying on his faith even that much more now. You know, sure. we have forgiveness. We have, you know, the pen, you know, we yeah. have that. So I'm pretty sure that he's going to be relying on his faith now to get him through these next few days. And then he may not even run again. Well, that, well that's you my know? next question. Yeah. What happens? Can he run again? Does he run again? I mean, that's he the can. first question you, uh, <laughs> he certainly can, but well, he is allowed to run, but would he run under yeah. these circumstances would given he, how the public views him and how he views yeah you know, how he views what's what's happened around him you know, you know, on, in this election. On CBS News last night, we had a CBS News reporter who was there, and after the hearing, he talked to uh, Mark Harris's wife, and his wife said that he may not run again. So um, so that causes doubt okay. that, he, that he may not even enter again, you know, with his health yeah. and things like that. So sure. he may yeah. just say that, hey, I'm out. Well, he was hospitalized in January for 10 days, eight of them in the ICU, he said, right. uh, and yesterday, after the hearing, his lawyer said that Mark Harris almost died. Uh, Mark Harris on the stand said that he suffered two strokes and was having difficulty wow. with recall and couldn't give testimony mm -hmm. Hmm. because of his health. So, you know, he hasn't said he won't run again, but obviously he's got <coughs> health issues and he's got political damage issues at this point. So I think in a, a GOP primary, if he did run, he would be likely to face a lot of challengers. All right, that's, that's my next question. Primary and general election. I have heard that McCready, Dan McCready, the Democrat who uh, lost to Harris in the general election, that their campaign isn't so excited about another primary. They're interested in another general election. What actually does happen next? Is it, is it do we start from square one? Is there an option to only start from the primary process? Beyond that, I mean, as does I anyone know? It, the state board will set a date for it's going to be a primary. Okay, mm -hmm. so, so we're starting from scratch. Starting mm -hmm. back over, mm -hmm. they're going to set a date for the primary and the general, and you know they're filing time. You have to sort of back mm -hmm. back time it, and so you got to allow time for folks to to register, and then for that period to go, and then the primary. So what I've heard is it may not be anyone seated before November. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And McCready has already um, started camp. I mean, uh, campaign and raising money. This whole time. And right. he's going to make an announcement today about yeah. you know moving forward. So, uh, so well, if if if, and again, I don't want to belabor this, but you know, what better time to talk about it than what we've been through this week? If if a Mark Harris doesn't run, then who does? Who, who is the Republican, or who are the Republicans that are out there willing to pick up the pieces? Because obviously it's, you know, I mean, this is a Republican seat. It's always been a Republican seat since, what, 55 years or something like that? Yep. So, so there's an opportunity here for some Republican out there, theoretically, to go out and win the seat that's always been won by their parties. But, uh, you know, with all this, uh, all this happening, you know, since Election Day, you know, who are the Republicans that are willing to, to go out there and, and, and test the history of this seat versus the, the present day, you know, cloud that hangs over the Republicans in this whole thing. Yeah, and we don't think Pitt, Pittenger, he's not, um, yeah. he's not putting his yeah, head back Pittenger, in the ring. Pittenger, the incumbent, has <clears throat> said he wouldn't run if there was a new election. Uh, that was a couple months ago, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, some other names that have been uh, tossed around are Kenny Smith, former city council member and mayoral candidate. Um, he has not said if he's going mm -hmm. to run or not, but he uh, did raise about $600,000 for the Charlotte mayoral race, so he's got fundraising roots in Charlotte. Also, Matthew Ridenauer, who lost his uh, Mecklenburg County Commission seat. Um, and one name that's been tossed around, hasn't said if he's going to or not, is Dan Barry, 
the Union County GOP chairman. Uh, Union County is a very rich source of votes mm -hmm. for Republicans in the 9th District, probably the most important single county for Republicans to win by a good margin, so uh, he could be looking as well. And my question is, do the Republicans need someone, not that those candidates aren't qualified and, and solid candidates, but do the Republicans really need somebody better now? Do they need kind of a, and I'll toss the name out there, like a Pat McCrory or someone that is kind of not necessarily above reproach, but can kind of restore the luster to the party, can kind of, you know, cross lines and say this is, you know, you know, I'm just wondering if, if they need more than just your, your typical ex-council members, ex you know, state senators, ex-county commissioners, you know, to run now, you know, given everything that, that, that they have to deal with in this next election. I think going so. back to what you said, that this is a Republican district for 55 years, mm -hmm. the short answer is I still give whoever the Republican nominee is the advantage against okay. McCready or whoever the Democrat is, because it is heavily Republican. It's been solid solid red for, for many years. This was the first time it's been close since 1984, yeah. and I was actually around to cover that one. So, <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, I know, sad, But right? the fact of the matter <laughs> is, it was a very close race. Right. So it would be interesting yeah. to see if that that right. dynamic is in play with the new election. It, 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 it's easy for me to say it won't be any closer because it's hard to imagine it being mm -hmm. any closer, but mm -hmm. I, I really think the motivation that brought a lot of people to the polls in November of 2018, you know, the, the backlash against Trump nationally that created what they tried to say was a blue wave. I don't know that you're going to have that in a special election in a few months from now. Yeah. What will vir voter turnout even look like, I wonder? Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, McCready, he has all the ammunition in the world now. You know, he has, I, you know, he's probably writ written his campaign Absolutely. speech Absolutely, no matter already. who the Republican is. Exactly. Campaign, cheaters, you know, yeah. cheaters yeah. don't win yeah. and things like that. So it just depends on, because yeah. 900 votes, so, you know, so that 900 votes that separated them, will those it, 900 people not show up to the polls yeah. and saying that I'm done? with this or will it engage and motivate other yeah. people who didn't vote mm -hmm. to come out and say, hey, you know, cheaters don't win. It plays right into his original campaign theme of, uh, you know, what it was a country over party or what, right, you know, right. I mean, this is, I mean, there's nothing, it's tailor made for that yeah. campaign to continue. And, um, you, you know, know, I, I mean, think, so many questions. Yeah. I think uh, you mentioned Trump and given that we're already in the 2020 presidential are, campaign yeah. at this point. <laughs> I do think those dynamics could we'll come into play again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Perhaps. You yeah. know, Trump campaigned for Mark Harris. Mm -hmm. I think we're probably likely to see uh, proxies for uh, Trump in the race for whoever's nominated. We could see Democratic presidential candidates mm -hmm. coming through mm -hmm. the district. Yeah. North Carolina is expected to be a mm -hmm. battleground state. The RNC is going to be in Charlotte. Mm -hmm. and. Yeah, Charlotte is half. I work for one, and I think TV stations are going to love it either yeah, way. Exactly. Yeah, there's money to be made, obviously. Right. And we haven't mentioned Robert <coughs> Pittenger. Does he? I mean, obviously, he's an opportunity here too if he's got a taste for the the race. I he's, suppose he's already uh, left office, and right. he's okay. started a series of uh, security forums, okay, some of which so, are yeah. international. Yeah. I I would be very. I surprised. spoke with him after, you know, after the the election, and he he was pretty yeah. pretty set against. Stand out, yeah. Yeah. and we can't forget the voter because what was that phrase that was said over and over again? Voters deserve better mm -hmm. than this. So here you have voters who did went out of the way, did whatever they did mm -hmm. in order to get to the polls in that November, and now that vote, their vote that yeah. they cast has now been disregarded, yeah. and they have to do it mm -hmm. all over again. So you know, so I, we we just can't forget the voters in that because the voters in District 9, they do yep. deserve better than this. Next time around, it, it ought to be the cleanest race in the country. I mean, Squeaky <laughs> clean, right? <laughs> they'll and, do everything they can to ensure that. Yeah. He got $130,000. Yeah. Yes, he uh, got McCray, paid Dallas, for the that? Bladen County $130, political. Uh, that was an, a little subtext in this wow. whole hearing. Uh, basically, Mark Harris had been asked how much he thought his campaign paid to this guy in Bladen County. He estimated it was around sixty to seventy thousand. It was actually about a hundred and fifteen to a hundred thirty thousand. Mm. And uh, Mark wow. Harris basically said that he wasn't keeping track of the spending of his campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, there were no receipts, and he was surprised by how much money had been paid to this shady yeah. guy in yeah. Bladen County. And that was just another subtext. Yeah. And we, we can't, can't forget there were two other races that also yeah. have to be done. There's That's a right. county commission right. race and then a soul and water race. So. This will go down in history. Oh, Bladen County so printing funny. up those little stickers. <laughs> Instead of I voted, it says, you know, Dallas voted for me. <laughs> or oh, I voted again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure I voted. Yeah. <laughs>
Um, let's switch gears and talk about uh, last weekend's NBA All-Star Weekend, which uh, by all accounts, uh, financially and image-wise and um, just uh, from the league's point of view, it turned out to be a pretty rousing success, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, the um, NBA commissioner, uh, Adam Silver, said it, everything went great. And, you know, Charlotte is very hospitable. And, um, you know, we'll have to see what the numbers look like, the economic impact. We won't know that for sure for a little while. But um, certainly don't think it was 100 million or 150,000 visitors. <laughs> but it will, it will certainly be a, a good number, I think. Um, and so I guess the next thing question is what's what will be next for Charlotte? Um, we have the RNC next year, which will be a massive event, obviously much much bigger than the All Star Game. But um, you know, there's been rumors circulating that the Panthers are are now seeking to bid for the NFL draft in a couple of years. Um, the next available uh, year for a city to host would be 2021. Mm -hmm. um, and last year Dallas hosted it and brought in about 150 think visitors and 50,000 vid visitors. <laughs> We had 150 last year. <laughs> it was a little more than that, yeah. um, and about um, 125 million in economic. Impact. Well, if you're not a sports fan, explain why the NFL draft is the equal to, or or perhaps uh, surpasses the uh, the NBA All Star Weekend when it comes to a tourist event for for the, the Charlotte economy. Well, you know, I think that event has evolved pretty dramatically over the years. You know, it used to be pretty standard stuff, but as with a lot of things, there's been a lot more hype, a lot more things that have become with it. Um, and you know, I think there's just a lot more hype, a lot more events, a lot yeah. more sponsorship, um, just a lot more money overall in those types of events. Yeah. And as we know, David uh, Tepper has been very interested in trying yeah. to pursue those opportunities, try to get some ROI on, on the, you know, purchase of the Panthers. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think that this kind of event will again continue to establish Charlotte as a major events destination a major you know we can pl we can yeah. play with the, the bigger cities and we can compete with them so the draft isn't necessarily a you know come and watch the game kind of a thing but it's it's that kind of convention like situation like the NBA all-star weekend was that that generates, if anything, more money because it's it's over time as opposed to one big event. Yeah, and if you look at the NFL, too, I mean, they're obviously very, very big money involved with that, very big attention on, mm -hmm. on that whole organization and, um, you know, professional football as a mm -hmm. whole. So, yeah, I think it would be very comparable, if not even more uh, dramatic as far yeah. as the number of people and the number of spending, yeah. amount of spending that would occur in Charlotte. Did you all get uptown last weekend? I did a little bit, and uh, you know, it was kind of portrayed as it was going to be a uh, traffic apocalypse. Um, I was able to drive in and park yeah. on Stonewall Street with, uh, well, with you're no problems. You know, you're yeah, exactly right. right. The doors open. Man. You know, yeah, I wish. VIP, right? Um, so it was. It was. There were people around. It appeared good crowds, but it was not the sort of gridlock nightmare. Mm -hmm. You won't be able to go anywhere in Charlotte that mm -hmm. I think had been warned about, and. You know, I think that probably speaks to uh, good planning, and uh, fortunately, nothing went wrong, which is one of the biggest things you can hope for with an event like this. Yeah. Well, the only thing, that, y y yes, I was uptown both nights, had to work, and and uh, the weather was horrible. But <laughs> aside from that, and despite that, I think people who were there had a good time. Mm -hmm. I, I really think it. You know, it, the vibe was good. Now, one of the things that is sort of the negative here was, you know, we had all this security stuff. Now, I didn't talk to this NBA player myself, but I was talking to a guy at the at the No Grease Barbershop where I thought, you know, land office business chairs were empty. Hmm. They were almost too close. They were too far inside hmm. the perimeter, right? So he was saying the NBA player told him, you know, you go to other cities like New York, a lot of security inside the arena, but outside, you know, yeah. it just felt a little maybe we can never err, you err too far on the side of caution. Overkill, maybe? maybe? A little, little, yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe a little. Yeah. Because you couldn't much. even cross the street from exactly. the Spectrum Center. You couldn't even cross the street. You had to go all the way around. The street was wow. closed. Exactly. Right, yeah, right, right, exactly. And there were some vendors over there, Intervision. They had food truck there, and they were trying to do some fundraising, but people could not get across to them mm -hmm. because of all of the, the fencing and the barriers. And they were upset because they said they did a walkthrough with the NBA, and the NBA said that, you know, we wouldn't have the fencing right here. But then on the day of the event, lo and behold, <laughs> there was fencing that they did not expect. And so they were kind of upset with the wall. Exactly. I, I, exactly. Wonder, <laughs> I wonder how much of that has to do with 
uh, the city and security agencies being interested in using this as a sort of dry run for the, the RNC, the which will be yeah. the same the venue, which mm -hmm. will be Damn. streets closed, massive barri yeah. barricades yeah. everywhere. It, it was sort of that model of security. And again, you want to be cautious, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, so it's yeah. easy to sit here now and say, well, maybe we went too far, and maybe we did, but it's all to be mixed in. And, and is, so I don't think we had turnstiles on the way into town, but I don't think there were 150. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the good thing is that even though the NBA All-Star is gone, they still left a footprint. Right. Um, NBA Cares, they you know redid West Charlotte High School's locker room, so they did that. You know, kids got sneakers, and then also a good thing about it is that the, the bridging bridges through basketball that is going to be a 10-week program where 40 um, CMS students are now partnering with CMPD to have some good relationships and to foster good relationships, and so that's all through the NBA, and that's going to be a 10-week. So they did leave their footprint good. here in Charlotte. Hey, we've got a minute left, and I don't want to uh, neglect talking a little bit about the Charlotte protest trial. You were in the courtroom this week again. Mark, uh, bring right. us up to date on, on what's happening there. Well, right now we have a jury, 12. They're, they're, they're expecting to start testimony on Monday. But, you know, it's interesting, even in jury selection, which can be pretty darn dry, you, you get to see where the sides are going. And one of the things we learned this week was that the police, oh, excuse me, the prosecutors say that they believe Raekwon Warren was shooting at police. That he, aiming at police aiming at, at police wow. and that the, the the protester justin carr got in the way so that's you know after that one of the prospective jurors said you know i can't serve in this case i know some officers that would really bother me mm -hmm. i can't be fair so that you know that, that's that takes it to another level and so there are things like that that came out in 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 jury selection that really made it uh, yeah. riveting stuff any sense how long we'll be in trial a couple weeks probably mm -hmm. a couple weeks they they things tend to go a little slower than they forecast, but I would ima imagine about a week and a half of testimony then maybe. Yeah. Yeah. You know, essentially, I was talking with my colleague, Colleen Harry, and she's covering the case sure. as well. And they were talking about the jury makeup. You know, you're supposed to have a jury of your peers. And we were just interesting that there were no African-American males wow. mm -hmm. on that jury. And so we don't know if, if, if there is a short, or, you know, or, or, or yeah. what. But, you know, she just thought that that was very interesting, that no African-American males at all even there's question some, some African American, American women, and, right, and there's exactly. actually some other, other, at least one other nationality there. But we're, yeah, we're going to have to make that the end. We'll pick okay. up this discussion next week, uh, hopefully. Uh, obviously, this trial is going to be going on. It has a lot of ramifications going forward. Anyway, thank you all for being here this week. Thank you at home for being with us. Always, you can join our conversation. Just email your questions and comments to off the record at wtbi.org. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Off the Record. of PBS Charlotte.